how far have we semiotically grown this season? As visual communicators, you have always been working semiotically. Oh no, we have not. Oh yes, you have. Whether designers or illustrators believe it or not, or whether they realize it or not, everything visual they create has the capacity to be meaning bearing. Semiosis provides a framework to ensure your work visually communicates what it needs to. Let us review how. In this final season three episode, I will review this season to demonstrate what we have discovered about Semiosis so far. This season's theme was encoding semiotic science. Therefore, I applied last season's semiotic Rosetta Stone metaphor theme into applying Pierce within visual communication. Season three also became the first season that could be watched months ahead of YouTube by becoming a Semiosis 101 producer with a Patreon membership. That means by the time you are watching this episode of YouTube, Patreon producers are already watching season four episodes or even season five. In season three, we have been on a deep dive into ways semiosis can be applied into design or illustration work. The episodes this season have also led you all to a surprising revelation that you have always been semiotic encoders. This Semiosis 101 season's first four episodes helped to orientate you first to how your audience semiotically perceives, understands and interprets what you visualize. We explored this through the pragmatic lenses of how Pierce explains the effects of interpretation in the mind of the audience. Episode 3.2 focused on the immediate effect of what is seen. Episode 3.3 then focused on the dynamic effect where more meaning is perceivable to then end on the final effect in episode 3.4 when the audience is sure of understanding the full meaning. You can watch these episodes individually or back to back in Omnibus 3.1 semiotic meaning bearing. These episodes establish the perceptual base to then flip the conversation back to how the creative can begin to encode meaning into any piece of visual communication work, big or small. In the next three episodes, the focus was on the fundamentals for beginning semiotic encoding, what meaning needs to be encoded and how to begin. We began with 3.5 semiotically building meaning. This episode reminded you all, or in the case of newbies, introduced you to a fundamental of semiosis within visual communication design, iconic representation. From this micro visual communication building block level, episode 3.6 began to show how meaning and messages can be blocked into visual communication work or encoded if you want to be precise. Then in episode 3.7, we cemented this semiotic encoding of meaning firmly within your ideation process. You know, the phase when you began to find ways to answer a brief? More on that next. You can watch episodes 3.5 to 3.7 individually or back to back in Omnibus 3.2 semiotic building blocks. Ideation, ideation, ideation. With our turn from interpretation and encoding to ideation, episodes 3.8 to 3.10 took us into a client's brief, 3.8, your first semiotic idea, 3.9, and then semiotic sketching, 3.10. These episodes were grouped into a sub-theme of semiotic sketching and demonstrated how iconic representation has always been present within sketching ideas. See? I told you you have always been doing this. In these three episodes, I consolidated the interpretive effect on the mind of the audience, how a basic semiotic sign encodes meaning, even if only as a weak quality, with how creators begin any design or illustration job with a rough sketched idea. I took the opportunity to also introduce more of Pierce's theory into this conversation in design-centric terms. Check out episodes in Omnibus 3.3 Semiotic Sketching. Soon, Semiosis 101 Season 4 will begin with a preview next episode, but at this point we are only halfway through our review of Season 3 episodes. With Episodes 311 to 314, we began to join everything together with these new piercing theoretical terms into designer-centric understanding. Our old favourite panda drawing example was replaced with an example closer to home, the Scout Scott visual identity. The live bird's image that forms the identity was the main focus. The question was asked, 
when is a beard not a beard? Which framed the explanation of how encoded semantic signs are already in plain view. What communicational power they have is dependent on the interpreter. So I use this example to begin our designer centric explanation of how Pierce defines the triads of sign action power levels. These are grouped in threes around the semiotics of perception, interpretation, and delivery. As we know, Pierce's terminology is obtuse. So I began to use analog terms that are more useful to creators. In sets of three, these different semiotic sign action power levels are a result of the interfacing between perception, interpretation, and delivery of the meaning. Understanding this flow between three interdependent functions within the semiotic encoder helps set up the next three episodes. These explain Pierce's 10 semiotic sign classifications. These four episodes on the semiotic power levels can be watched individually or back to back in Omnibus 3.4 interpreting semiotic signs. From these episodes, the season began to turn toward the finish line with three episodes on what Pierce's 10 sign classifications are, why they are important, and more importantly, what they mean to creatives. In episode 315, we revisited what I had already begun to explain back in season one. I started to use more and more designer-centric analog terms for Pierce's obtuse originals, building on what we had established toward a fresh way of understanding Pierce's theory. This allowed me to begin discussing in episode 316 a new concept with you all about the delivery of the semantic meaning. I use the term sign vehicle specifically for this, so you can picture different modes that semantic meaning can be delivered by. By episode 317, we were then ready to frame 10 ways to semantically encode meaning within your visual language. This explanation was being powered without any smelly guffs. So before we sprint to the end of this review, these three episodes are collected in Omnibus 3.5, the 10, yes 10, semiotic signs. To end season three on encoding semiotic signs, I spent the last two episodes on using examples, one from design and one from illustration to explain how it all comes together. Just as importantly, in these episodes, I reinforce the revelation that whether you are aware or not, whether you believe it or not, or whether you accept it or not, creatives have always been encoding semiotic signs in your work. Some of you doing it better than others. The two examples I used were Hudson Fuggles Christmas by the River 2021 festival designs and a set of Princess Sazzle's picture book illustrations I produced. The two examples could not be further apart, one set of design outputs to brand an annual Christmas winter festival, the other being a princess on an adventure. In episode 318 we saw how a set of picture book illustrations utilised the principles of semiosis from ideation to finished illustrations. In episode 319 we flipped to a micro semiotic lens to explore the and deconstruct where and how semiosis is present within any piece of design, with the help of a robin, a fox and a stag. These analyses took us down the two different target audiences perception levels from thirdness through secondness to firstness. From an encoding semiotic science perspective, we explored how meaning can be creatively applied within Pierce's 10 classes of semiotic sign. In the illustration example, we semiotically constructed meaning and then deconstructed where semiosis is present within the design. These episodes, together with the next episode, Season 4 Preview, will be available to watch back to back in Omnibus 3.6. Semiosis in action. So we end this third season of Semiosis 101 with a fresh revelation on your role as a visual communicator. You have always been working semiotically. Semiosis 101 just helps you to enhance how effective you now want to be in visually communicating. There was a lot to pack into episodes 318 and 319, but I still only scratched the surface of this analysis. Therefore, as exclusive content for Semiosis 101 producers with a Patreon membership, I have made a Princess Sassel Semiotic Analysis Special for illustrators. A design special will be next. Check out the Patreon link below. Next week, we will preview Semiosis 101 Season 4's theme for the next 20 episodes. But if you were a Semiosis 101 producer, you can be watching Season 4 months in advance of YouTube 
on Patreon. Just saying, thanks for watching. Check out the other Semi Usus 101 episodes, like and share them with your friends. And hit the bell and subscribe buttons to be notified when next week's free Semi Usus 101 episode is published. You can also follow Semi Usus 101 on the socials for updates. It is at Semi Usus 101 on Instagram and threads. See you all again next week for more Semi Usus 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills.